Here we're at Fully Tech Mechanical. We're working on the uh, second cylinder head for our 454 Mercruiser project. Uh, just uh, getting down to the nitty gritty here. Just get just about ready to put these heads on. Um, you might remember from the last video we got these back from the machine shop and we were checking a few things out. Um, we actually had uh, this head taken back apart, went back to the machine shop, and we had a couple thousandths taken off the deck to get the chambers the same size as the other head. So we're now running uh, 119, 120, 120 chambers across the uh, across the whole head. But we're working on these valve spring uh, valve rotator eliminators uh, that was we found was wrong uh, when it came back from the machine shop. And here are a couple little things to show you. So on the right, right here, is a standard GM valve uh, valve or valve spring rotator. Works kind of like a Torrington bearing. Uh, in a stock application, they're supposed to um, help the seats cool and do all kinds of other magical things. Um, I guess they work. These engines can go a long, long ways, but they don't tolerate um, high seat pressures or high opening pressures. You know, once you get over about 220 PS or 220 pounds of spring force open, you're just going to tear these up. And they have a lot of moving parts. There's about there's basically three pieces to one of these valve uh, rotators, and the more pieces you have in your valve train, the more things you're going to have in motion, and the more things you uh, aren't going to be able to control. So, anyways, that's a stock one. This is a rotator eliminator that we ordered by accident uh, and found it to have too small of an inside diameter, meaning that the size of the inside of this cup was a little bit small. And then this is the one we got from Comp that is the correct one. And you'll see our valve springs. They're not a beehive style. They're a constant diameter spring. doesn't quite sit in this cup properly. And it does almost almost perfectly and as we get tension on it that spring is going to expand outwards and uh, seat inside that uh, inside that cup so these are the right ones so we're all excited we got our parts back from comp right we're gonna throw these parts in slap the heads together put it on the motor and we're gonna go make some noise right wrong just because we have the right parts and they fit right and our valve spring fits right doesn't mean we're done. We have a few more things we have to check and some things we have to correct before we go any further. This tool here is a installed height micrometer. There's not really any accurate way to measure your installed height without this. You can kind of play around with rulers and such, but the only way to really accurately know to the thousandths of an inch whether uh, where your installed height is is one of these tools. They're not really a lot of money. I think you can get one through All Star or pro form for $75, $100. There's different ones for different installed heights. Uh, this is a um, 1.5 to 1.9, or sorry, uh, I got, I'll, let's have a look at it. It's a 1.8 to uh, 2.2, I believe it is. So it's got about uh, 400 thousands of travel. Yes, I should have known that before I started recording the video. But anyways, uh, we look at our specs that came with the valve springs and the stuff we get from Comp. And these valve springs are to have a seat pressure with like a closed seat pressure of 121 pounds. We've rated all our springs at 1900, which is the uh, suggested installed height uh, or valve closed height from Comp. So what we need to find is that our distance between the face of this rotator eliminator and the bottom of our retainer needs to be exactly 1900 or as close as we can get it. A lot of guys will say give or take 20 thousandths and you'll probably be fine at that. Um, but also if you're slightly higher at your seat pressure closed you're going to be extremely higher uh, spring pressure with it open which is where the maximum wear is going to happen on your camshaft. So I try to be as fussy as I possibly can without being ridiculous and uh, sneak up on my numbers and we're going to show you how we do that here. So we've installed our valve, valve our um, retainers, given the, uh, the tip of the valve a light little tap just to seat the retainers and everything together. And then we're going to back this off till it stops, give it a little bit of a crank. It's hard to do with one hand. And then we're going to look at where we're at. And right now we are at um, 1.8. 
and we're shooting for an installed height of 1,900. So we've got uh, 30 to 31 thousandths material that we have to take off that valve rotator eliminator, the spring rotator eliminator, to get our installed height right on, the, right on the money. If we were to install a valve spring right now, we'd probably end up with somewhere around 15 to 20 pounds of extra seat pressure in the closed position, and that may put us upwards of 60 or 100 pounds uh, of extra uh, open pressure, which again is going to put a ton of load on that lifter and a ton of load on that camshaft that's unnecessary uh, and going to shorten the life of the cam. So we've got our eliminator in the lathe and you see we're taking a little material off the face and this is the side of the eliminator that will go against the head. So um, it is hard steel, it's not super hardened but it's hard enough uh, so it takes time to work through it. Uh, we're going to have to take about 30 thousandths off of this. Uh, we'll probably take about 20 to 25 off and then um, then we'll test fit it, actually we'll let the part cool down, we'll test fit it and uh, see if we have to take any more. It's best to sneak up on it because we're trying to hit our number bang on or as close to it without going over so we don't have to use shims to get back in uh, back into place. And there we go, after uh, having it in and out of the lathe about three times, we, we came up to about uh, one, uh, one eight, um, one eight ninety eight, one eight ninety seven. we came back, took a couple more thousandths off and uh, let everything cool down and we were bang on the number. So we'll have exactly the right, um, the right installed height and uh, the right seat pressure and we'll do the last couple valves up and these heads will be ready to be washed up and some new uh, new valve seals and uh, break in springs and we'll be ready to go. So we have a couple more to go here. Uh, like I said, we just sneak up on it, do a little bit at a time, uh, make sure the parts don't get hot so it doesn't skew your numbers. Um, and this is uh, this is what you'll uh, this, this is what you'll end up with. Um, if we took too much material off one, we could uh, order a shim or go into the pile and find a pile, find a shim that would go under that eliminator to get our height exactly where we want it. Um, I'm not really a fan of shims. If I can do it in one piece, uh, that's a lot better. Um, I usually order a couple extra eliminators when I'm ordering them. That way, I have one or two in case I screw it up. And it finds you'll find that if you have them in the shop. You won't screw them up. If you have a three-day wait for uh, FedEx to bring them out to you, that's when you'll screw something up. So that's a good idea to have uh, a couple spares. Um, but back to having a, pa a pile of shims. If we had, say, three or four pieces or a couple of shims underneath this, um, if you've ever watched high-speed video of uh, valve springs in action at high RPM, you'll actually see um, the pedestal or these, like, eliminators um, actually oscillating and coming off their seat and when you end up having multiple uh, shims stacked under they'll start to oscillate uh, and sort of find a resonance along with the valve spring um, and you just end up with um, uh, unreliable or uncontrollable uh, valve control um, it's just not predictable it's not manageable so we like I said we try to do this in the fewest parts possible and by just slowly sneaking up on it on the lathe, you'll end up uh, you'll end up with a really good, reliable setup that's going to make make good power. Make sure the cam lasts um, and uh, just work.